So I hope you've had a chance to take a couple minutes to think about computing the determinant of this matrix uh, using the three rules. So our idea is to take this matrix and put it into row reduced echelon form. So we have a triangular matrix and then we'll be able to compute the determinant. Now I've already done the first step here. I've taken the at my pivot the one here and I've made zeros below it and I'm just describing how I did that operation and because of rule A which is hiding here let's move it uh, rule A here uh, about adding a multiple of one row to another I haven't changed the determinant in doing either of those two operations. Now what I'm going to do here is just kind of notice that well I can factor out a three out of the bottom row so I have one, five, minus six, zero, one, minus two, zero, one, one. So the determinant of this guy is three times the determinant of this guy. And now I can do one more row operation, right? So that this is the same thing as three, uh, one, five, minus six, zero, one, negative two. And I'm gonna add negative of this row to that row. So zero, zero, uh, two plus one. Um, oops, uh, what am I doing here? I'm adding minus two to this one, and then I should have three here. Hopefully that's right. Let me double check. Uh, let's see, negative uh, gives me two plus one is three. Okay, so there I have, and now I have a triangular matrix. So putting all the pieces together, I get three times one times one times three, which is equal to nine. Okay, so I'm hoping, oh, uh, sorry, I made a mistake here. Uh, at a certain point, this should have been a negative three, this should have been a negative three, and then this changes this to a one, and changes this to a one, and then changes this to uh, three. So uh, hopefully you did this question better than me. I'm still going to give myself a happy face for finishing the question. So that's good. Um, and let me just quickly give you an explanation of why it's true. Don't worry, we're not going to go into all the gory details. We're just going to prove a very special case of part A. So here's a matrix. And suppose that the matrix B is obtained by adding twice, multiplying the row the bottom row by k and adding it to the top row. Okay, so I'm going to end up with a plus c k, b plus d k, c d. So I did one of these row operations that I'm allowed to do. So this is row two times k plus row one. And then what I'm going to do is I just compute the determinant of both matrices and show that they're the same. Okay. So then the determinant of B is A plus CK times D minus C B plus DK. Expand it out. So here I get AD minus CDK and minus CB minus CDK. And uh, I should have had some more cancellation going on here somewhere. What did I do wrong? Ah, right here, there should have been a plus. And this term and this term cancel, and I end up with AD minus CB, which is exactly the determinant of A. Okay, so the general proof kind of expands upon this particular idea. And let me just kind of highlight a, a very useful consequence of this is that if A has two proportional rows, right, that means just that one row is a multiple of the other, then you can actually say that the determinant of your matrix is zero. Okay, and let me just quickly kind of explain why that's true. So if I look at this matrix right here, the top row and the third row, they're proportional because if I, the top row, if I multiply it by three, I get the bottom row. Okay, so they're proportional here. And so I can use the row operations and the theorem about the row operations in the determinant to say, well, if I take this original matrix, one, two, three, six, seven, eight, five, 10, 15, and I multiply the top row by minus five and add it to the bottom row, I get one, two, three, six, seven, eight, zero, zero, zero. All right, so I've done a row operation. Which row operation have I done? 
row 1 times minus 5 plus row 3. So that's a valid row operation, and I don't change the determinant. But now, what's the determinant of the matrix on the right? Well, you do the column expansion, right? So you do the call, uh, sorry, not the column expansion, you would do a row expansion because you've got a row of zeros, and you would just have minus one, three plus one times zero times the determinant of A31 plus minus one, three plus two times zero times the determinant of A32 plus minus one, three plus zero, uh, uh, sorry, minus one raised to the power of three plus three times zero times the determinant of A33, which gives you a zero. And you can see how you could extract from the general case from this special case here. And I just made this as a note here, is that any matrix with a row or column to all zeros has to have determinant equal to zero. And then the easy way to see that is just simply do a row or column expansion Uh, on the row or column of zeros. Okay. And you'll notice that kind of what I did in this previous example was a bit of a, a hybrid approach, right? In the sense that I did some row operations to actually make a matrix with uh, more zeros. Now, in the previous example, I managed to do a row operation to make an entire row of zeros. But you could do things, you may not be able to get an entire row or column with zeros, but you may actually be able to do an operation that puts more zeros into your matrix, right? And then once you have enough zeros, then you could do a cofactor expansion. So you can use a bunch of different hybrid approaches for computing the determinant. So as an example, I'm looking at this matrix right here. It's a four by four matrix. Uh, if I didn't know about the material from today, I would say, well, hey, I would use the second column and I would do a, uh, a, row, a column expansion down the second column. Now, you, it's like, you have two zeros, but what's better than two zeros? Three zeros. And is there a way to get three zeros? Well, I can make this 10, but into a zero if I multiply the top row by negative two and add it to the bottom row, okay? So it's kind of like doing a row operation, but you're not caring about pivots, you're caring about killing things below it. So if you were to do that, I'll write that out. So I'm gonna leave the, the top three rows al alone. And what I'm doing is multiplying the top row by negative two and adding it to the bottom. And I'll end up with zero, zero, uh, two, and one. So just so that you keep track here, this is row one times negative two plus row four. And by doing this one simple operation to get going, I've actually have more zeros, which makes things a little bit easier going forward. So I can actually take a break and let you try to finish off this example. And when we come back, we'll finish up this example and then we'll talk about how determinants are related to inverses.